week's episode is brought to you by Tabletop Backer Party on Facebook, which is the largest board game crowdfunding group on this side of the internet. Hello, everyone. Welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter with Glory Hound. Dr. Glory Hog. And Greg Dixon. Hello, Martin. Thanks for joining us today. I know a lot of people right now are at PAX U. Um, some yeah. people are. And they're terrible people. FOMO Just much. Terrible. Terrible. I'm so sad. Terrible. I wanted to go to PAX U, but it just wasn't the right time for us, you know. But I feel like everybody's gone. That's like the new super hot convention yeah, right now. It is. It is. You know? What else we want to talk about? I know. Oh, okay. So we do have something we want to talk about. We want to talk about Virage really quick because. Uh, we've all gotten a chance to play we've it We've all gotten a chance and to play it. You played it more than once. I've only played it once. It was a Kickstarter, and the only reason why I, I super remember this Kickstarter is because Dr. Glory Hog, like, poo-pooed on that game. Like, so hard, I remember. <laughs> like, I want to go back and watch the footage. <laughs> okay. How bad it is. So, one, why do Euro games typically, not all Euro games, why do they find the most banal <laughs> sources <laughs> of, like, theme? Where they're like, Like Let's trading goods in the Mediterranean. <laughs> or <laughs> pumping oil across the vast fields. Or... Like, I don't know, harvesting bread in the Roman <laughs> times or collecting grapes in Italy. Building like, up I'm estates like while the king is on vacation. Yeah, <laughs> like I just don't. And so this one is about, like, damming water and, like, making energy, which, like, in real life is probably more exciting than playing a game of it where you're like, okay, the water goes down and then I make energy. Huzzah! Like, it's just... I the know, theme. you were so upset. Like, why can't you there were be? You so, so upset. Well, like, I mean, it I doesn't can't have even. to be, like, 3D immersive with, like, AR cards that pop up or something. But, like, I don't need, like, augmented reality <laughs> and everything. But, like, a theme would be cool that's, like, interesting. I think that's part of why games like uh, Lock Up or Lords of Waterdeep or, or Asking for Troubles are so fun. Because, like, okay, Euro mechanics of, like, worker placement and stuff. But I also, like, dig this theme, theme. Yeah. of, like, grabbing aliens and throwing them in the sun or going I on quests or whatever it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, or collecting up rogues so you can send them on some epic yeah. quest to go, like, yeah. you know, yeah. shank some ambassador. You're like, come on, rogues, my party of five rogues, go kill that ambassador for I me. I think in the early days of Euros, the, it Lord. was for a very heady crowd. It was very, like, intellectual. And they, like, had those kinds of historical themes and... Now that games are a little bit more so like I'm a firm widespread, like let's make the theming more approachable well, I'm a, I'm as well. I'm a firm believer you know? that there's a certain level of like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, going on. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, if wow. you do it just for yourself, <laughs> if you're doing it just to make yourself feel important, then it's not really that <laughs> okay. scholarly. Well, let's talk about Barrage, though. Yeah, so. <laughs> Well, I hear what you're saying. With Barrage, you're saying. you created like such a poo-poo stink on it. You were like, wow, oh, this is terrible. Who's going to want to move water droplets down there? And, uh, power and electricity, this seems stupid. And what did you think about Barrage? Because I brought it home, and I was a little nervous because <laughs> because of like the Let's all the beforehand on that. Yeah, but I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, I really like this game. I think Dr. Glory Hog's going to like it. So let's talk about Pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> Pipeline is a Euro game where you are trying to move oil around and make yeah. like extra yes. oil. I can equivocally say that I dislike that game on so many levels. Pipeline? And it's not because, yeah, it's not yeah. because Pipeline is, a p I just don't enjoy it. Like, it's yeah. super like, okay, I'm moving a tile around. Oh, uh, now it's super crude oil instead of regular crude oil. I could care. I don't want to say I couldn't care less because that's, like, not a thing. But, like, it was so... Boring. I just wanted it to end. I like liked Pipeline. Pipeline I know you was good. Did. <laughs> and we backed that one, and I super regret it. <laughs> now, Barrage, on the other hand, was really good. It was It was it really, really good. Because it, it had some things in it that I liked. It had, besides, like, the water moving down, like, that part didn't super excite me. There was a lot of having to choose, like, how that water worked, which was really kind of almost like building an engine. Yeah. There was, like, asymmetrical players that, like, you're, like, representing different countries. And so each of those players plays differently. And then they get, like, another sideboard that also gives them a different thing. So, like, I had one. And those things all seem, like, really OP, yeah, which well is kind of fun. So, like, the one I had they, was, they like, balance. no matter how much energy you normally collect, if it's less than four, it would equal four. Oh, and the other the one, one yeah, Dan Dan's one. And we were yeah. all really jealous of that well, one. Yeah. Well, it was actually not as good in two-player because you start making uh, more energy faster. Yeah. But then I also had 
the card that was like you can complete <laughs> contracts <laughs> for three less. I do like laying pipe, but not <laughs> pipe. It's totally <laughs> different. Totally and different. Then you pipe can complete a contract now. for three less. <laughs> so like I was already completing like seven point contracts by running like yeah. a negative energy. Yeah, that's like the combo so, like, that Dan had. And it that was seemed like, very strong. That was really good. And knowing that that will always change, and then like where the water is going to be at is going to change, yeah. and where the the public dams are going to change. Yeah, and, and the goals you're going through, the order you, you yep, have to do them different. as well as far as what you're building. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's what really adds to it. If it didn't have that, if it was just like trying to maximize your energy production off of water falling down a hill, I would have been bored. Well, it yeah. also has some conflict. I mean, there's definitely ways oh, to yeah. like screw each other and well, stuff. Well, yeah, she set up a power <laughs> plant. <laughs> and like in right a two-player, I imagine like it's it. even more so that way. So in you some could regards, spread out more. You can, but you can also choose to target the only other opponent you have. She did it once, and then I built know? I built all the dams up at the very top, so like I could stop all the water up high before she could get to any of it's it. It's actually that was my that was my payback. It's actually more like a. Awesome. It, it actually has a scythe feel to it, guys, because you have this board. It does. And you're doing worker placement for these things. And you're taking these things off your board. You're getting bonuses for those things that you're getting taken off your board. And then you have, like, this strategic sort of area control where you're also using, like, other people's items on the board and stuff like that. And just trying to set yourself up a little bit more strategically than the other players to, like, build your little system. So, like, it was kind of interesting how that – beginning portion there with the boards and everything was kind of scythe-like, I feel. And then, like, the little uh, resource, I really liked the resource management. Yeah. Like, where you have Forces the wheel. You to diversify. It really, was really, really cool. Or to really it's burn so a lot of but your to workers to to, yeah. to be it fair, fast. you know the reason why she likes this game is because it had something that rotated in it, which is apparently the only thing <laughs> she cares about in games. Oh, yeah. You guys need to get, like, <laughs> a little lazy Susans for, for asking that for trouble. She likes because it's a round board. <laughs> That's the only reason why she and likes that game. You put that on a lazy she, Susan she and be like, ta-da. She has a simple pleasure. She right? likes circles, okay? She's a the big universe fan. is spinning, guys. I think to piggyback, though, on what you're saying, like, with the pipeline, like the fun of pipeline is doing better the next time, like figuring out ways to be more efficient. But I don't see the inherent fun in the mechanics of the game. And I think with yeah. Barrage, there is inherent fun in there the is. mechanics like of I like setting yourself up and seeing your engine work and 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 finding ways to profit off of what other people have built and all that. One kind of stuff. difference is pipeline. Once we finished, I wanted to be done. Like I wanted to be done before it finished. <laughs> with Barrage, it ended, and I was like, I could have gone more rounds, and really? then I was. If it wasn't already midnight, I would have been like, let's just play it again. I do think that's the one legitimate complaint about Barrage, though, is that it's very long. One is exciting. But two hours is not. And one It was way more than two building. hours when we played it. Well, so so when we you play it, it with four, it's three and a half, you know, especially if you're learning. So with us learning, be aware. It, it was about two and a half. I honestly think we could knock it out in under two because. You think so? So Wasteland yeah. Express has been sitting on our well. shelf of opportunity for like over a year. Shelf, shelf of opportunity. opportunity. Because. <laughs> like the PC gamer term. Because. <laughs> Because I got it, and then when I read that it was two to three hours, I just kept yeah. putting it off, putting it off. But we ended up knocking it out with our learning game and another subsequent game right afterwards. We did them back to back. Yeah. Both those games ended in under two hours, like one, like wow. an hour and fifty six minutes. But the other one was like an hour and forty well, player, minutes. Player count makes a huge difference. Player count makes a huge difference. I think Barrage, that first game, will take a while because there's a lot of really thinky choices on what you want to do, and you're like, there was times where I was like tr almost trying to walk back my turn because I'm like, oh, was that the right move? And I know she definitely was like, no, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, okay, okay. But that's what will make that game take longer. But if people understand yeah. the basic mechani mechanics yeah. of it, you're just going to fly through it. Well, I'm glad to hear you guys it went that It was much easier fast, to teach. Especially with you learning it. It was much easier for her to teach. Because when we played the other night, I was like, oh, man, I do like this. There's a lot of cool things happening here. But am I ever going to actually get this to the table? And Heck if it, yes. If it can be an Heck hour yes. 45 or two, <laughs> then there's hope. But if it's three, it just... I just know from logging plays that those games just don't get to the table. Wasteland Express is really good. So they're making a good point here about terms that you use when you play your games, right? Yes. So two things can kind of happen when you come home with something. Like I could come home, when she comes home with games, which is usually what happens, I could be like, oh, another long Euro that we're never going to get to play. Or I could be like, yes, the Legion has gotten stronger. Our army of darkness will prevail. It's all about how you word it. <laughs> it's just really about the energy you put behind your games. It's having the right attitude. If it ever, if there's ever a blizzard or like a tropical storm in Arizona, we can last out. A tropical out. storm. We right. can last out as long as we've got water because we have the entertainment down. Yeah. Right. We have we've entertainment. We've got enough yeah. entertainment. You need if, a light source. If Netflix, yeah. <laughs> if Disney buys, some candles, if guys. Disney buys the internet and decides to shut it off, <laughs> what? her and I are still okay. <laughs> if anyone's going to buy the internet and turn it off, it's Disney. Think about it. Amazon. 
Amazon too. Yeah. Jeff but Bezos pranking the you, world. You can only make so much money be before you just become <laughs> a dragon. All right, guys. Are you ready? Are you ready? Well, Let's there you go. Her. That's our barrage review. Well, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. 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 It's good, guys. It, it is. It's, it's worth checking out. It's on pre-order. But yeah. be aware that it's long. Uh-huh. More boxes for the cat to lay on. At least that's what mine do. Exactly. Yeah, she you're loves providing boxes too. You're providing homes for your animals, guys. Okay. Aww. Homeless like, cats yeah. can sleep in the game boxes <laughs> that we get rid of, like the expansion boxes. <laughs> oh, and Barrage had an expansion that we got too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Add so to you know, and I don't, I don't think it was as hard to learn as you would think, based off of the thickness super of the simple. rule book. Easier than brass to learn. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Super simple. To Easier learn, than guys. pipeline to learn. Yeah, it's yeah, it, probably. well, it's one of those things, like I said, with Scythe, where like you get it out and people can be intimidated by it. Scythe right. messed me up the first Yeah, time. and you're like, oh, crap, what is all this? And yeah. then like once you play through it, you're like, oh, man, this is like super simple. You take yeah. one action per intuitive. turn. I would almost yeah. say that p that this game would be easier to get back to, like on a repeat plays, than Scythe was. Because Scythe, you still have to kind of really like re kind of like remember what you're doing and what you want to unlock. Yeah. Because there's so much variability where this one has – key points that are variable, but, like, the main essence of the game is the same. That's right. true. Where Scythe, I have to, like, relearn my board every time. Like, oh, I'm playing a different board, so what am I doing with this one? What do I really want to focus on? Or what do I want to focus on with this tribe? With yeah. that one, it's really easy to see, like, this is what they, this is where it's kind of where my strengths are, here's where my weaknesses are, and just go. So right. I honestly think it'll take me longer to relearn Scythe than it would this if I sat Absolutely. For, for, like, a year without playing it or something. All right, guys. First up this week, we have Car Wars by Steve Jackson Games. This is for two to four players. It's going to last about 30 minutes per player. I just want to let you guys know that although I do work with Steve Jackson Games, this is not, like, a paid thing or anything. We don't get paid for our Kickstarters and which ones we go ahead and show you guys. This is just you're going to hear a lot about this we game here. We literally, literally <laughs> like can't get people to pay us for this show. So excited. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. what? That's not what I meant. I mean, we've tried. But we could no. probably get us to pay people for us not to do it. We we have been offered for money to like to do a to game, but we just don't games. do that. Yeah, but it's, that's just not fair because that's, that's not the show we want. Right, to bring that's you not guys. our ethos, and that's it's not, not a commercial. Right, exactly. It, it, and that's exactly. If we're going to do a commercial, we'll tell you. These are our true thoughts about yeah. the game. So just to let you know, I'm going to like. Go crazy on this, okay? <laughs> she does have a lot of knowledge. She's played this before well, and, and all I, that. And I kind of felt so like excited. when I was taking notes, I was like, I'm just going to sit and listen because so I know you've played it. I know you're connected with the company. You probably right. know the history, so I just want to hear. First off, guys, okay, this is a miniature style game in the way it's not fully miniatures, but it's not fully a board game. It lands more in that X-Wing style area here. You're going to have range rulers for vehicles. It is a car combat where you're like in a post-apocalyptic world and you're going to be driving around and shooting at other players and trying to basically blow up their cars or disable them so they can no longer play, okay? I really, really enjoy the fact that this game, they streamlined it so much in the fact of all like the player pieces and stuff, the little player boards and everything are so intuitive and like the range ruler you already know what that is because you've already done that sort of stuff with x-wing and stuff like everything it just makes so much sense in this game and it makes it really super easy to play you know now greg what was your first impressions whenever you saw this game well i, I know you don't play miniature games i don't really i mean it's just not a genre i've really gotten into did you play like heavy hitters I have not played that one. Okay. No, I, I'm not like opposed to them, but I don't find that I just they happen, you know, sort of organically that often. Um, with a game like this, I felt like you know, there's a lot of these big price tag games, but with this one, you've got this pedigree of like decades of them refining it. Yeah, you it's know like what I mean. Sixth mm -hmm. edition, plus yeah. they've done card game versions. I mean, it's like thirty plus years old. Oh you know? yeah, thirty five plus. Back years in the old. 80s. arena game, this is cheap. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it's yeah. not it's not crazy. I felt like they could have like really gouged and probably still funded. Yeah. And I felt like they found like a, a decent price point. And so you got all these like decades of refinement. You've got what looks like a really cool presentation. Uh, I mean, if you're in the market for this kind of game, this feels like kind of a no-brainer to me. Dr. Glory Hog, what were your first thoughts on this game? Facebook comments are working. I was just saying hi to them. Oh, okay. They popped <laughs> in. <laughs> hey Robert. Hello, hello Robert. So we have a long history of Steve Jackson games, right? The Munchkin was probably her gateway game. King of Tokyo is probably my big gateway game. You know, uh, Red Dragon Inn was another one of those ones in Smash Up, kind of in during that time frame. But I have played 
a lot of Steve Jackson games. Ones that are like not produced, ones that haven't been allowed for years, or not allowed, but like things that haven't been produced for a really long Printed time. Printed for stuff. years, yeah. So I play a lot of the different games, and they tend to they they all very much tend to go like kind of one way, where they tend to either they under like lighter, like Munchkin, which is light and just kind of silly fun, or super heavy, which is more like. I'd say more like the ogre and stuff seems like really heavy when I first played it and everything. And it, it got easier, obviously. But it right. seemed like they only went one of two ways, right? Because they've been making games for years since like, what, the 70s or something? Yeah. Some decades. Longer than I've been alive. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so I was initially skeptical. And I'm always skeptical because she works for them. So, like, you know, she's going to be going over stuff. And so I, I'm always worried, like, oh, she's just into this one because, like, she's supposed to be into it. But she's been talking about this nonstop since FloorCon <laughs> last <For real>. year. <laughs> and at first I thought it was like, oh, just general hype because she really likes the company, obviously. And I was like, oh, it's just general, like, fangirl hype, like where she's just like, oh, I'm just really into this company. But she just wouldn't stop talking about <laughs> it. So when it finally <laughs> popped up, I went in depth in it, and I was taking a look at it, and I was like, you know what? One of my favorite computer games when I was younger was Carmageddon, where you raced around and you put drills on the front of your car and you'd ram pedestrians and you would <laughs> get points and you'd win. Like, you'd win by completing the race, but you got more points by totaling the cars to your left and right. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. You could upgrade and stuff. That's what this is for grown-ups. Like, you can make your own car. You can attach parts to it. You get to decide your drivers, your, your passenger, your, like, your gunner. You get to decide what you want on the front of your car, what you want on the back of the car, what you want on the sides of your car. You've got so many different options on this. You can ride around like with a flamethrower truck or you can ride around with like something that's just got machine guns and you're just like a porcupine of machine guns just <laughs> spinning and just <laughs> shooting all different directions. That was like nickname in college. Porcu <laughs> the, yeah, porcupine. Really? the porcupine. The porcupine, porcupine of machine destruction. Gun. The porcupine of <laughs> porcupine machine gun. Machine guns. Porcupine machine gun over here. It's our new band. Porcupine machine gun. Come yeah. check us out at the edge. Yeah. The, um, got a new album coming so out. So I really, really was worried that it was just going to be kind of like this big heavy thing and it wouldn't get as much play because of that. But they've streamlined it so much and they've got the cool car dials and stuff. So I'm actually super hyped for this one. So the shirts on this are like so cute too, Martin. Like I really love that the art, the art that they've de done for this. But I agree. I like apparel. <sighs> yeah, I think we, I wish we were I'm actually, I'm actually that wearing too. a Steve Jackson shirt now. The oh, other yeah. really, really cool thing that they did in this campaign that I don't think a lot of miniature style campaigns do is the fact that they are offering a box that is two player. Oh right, and for then 50 also or yeah, right? for like fifty bucks, yeah, fifty yeah, bucks yeah. you can have everything you want to get to play with and two. just do two player, that and then maybe cool. if you want to add something on later on, you can. But yeah, like starting out, you can just do a two player game, which I would say is the most that usually me and Doctor Glory Hog play. You know, right? And then it also is really nice how everything is kind of piecemeal, so you can play it if a couple times, and then be like, you know, I wish we had more drivers, or oh, I wish we had more cars to choose from, or oh, I right. wish we had the improved map, and then you can go buy that stuff. Where like a lot of these types of games. You're dropping 100 plus bucks, and it's a one-time deal. If you don't get it right away, so think of something like Tainted Grail. If you didn't get it at the Kickstarter, it'll still be good. Yeah. But there was so much included with that, you just feel like let down buying it later because you're like, I would have gotten so much more if I would have just backed it then. This is not one that you have to feel that way. You can buy it at whatever level is comfortable for you, get into it, and then go. Oh, I really okay. like this. Pick stuff up later. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Plus, they've unlocked so much ridiculous uh, crap. Is there they is there much do so much stuff? Is there much that is exclusive? I'm trying to remember now as I went through this. If there's much that like no, the exclusive that incentivizes thing incentivizes you to go now versus uh, although it seems like it's cheaper now. Yeah, it is. Which is not less always expensive. true with Kickstarter. Sometimes you feel like you're paying a premium. Whereas here, it seems like you're actually getting maybe a deal versus buying at retail, which is nice and a refresh the refreshing to see. The exclusive for this was it launched on Black Friday, and you yeah. got a free Uncle, Uncle uh, Al's upgrade pack if yes. you got it then, and it was a dollar cheaper. It's a long for campaign, the pledge. too, by the it way. It is a long Speaking campaign, that, yeah. There's still 30-plus days going. They've it's been, been going for like a week. They've been working on this for I don't even know how many years. years. It's been like three or four years now that they've yeah. been fine-tuning and refining this game and everything. Because they wanted to and make it perfect for like the old-time right. Car Wars fans. That there was like an RPG based off of it, basically. They were trying that to... That in depth, and then also get new gamers that want to just get in and, and battle. Right, and they were trying to incorporate everybody, what everybody wanted. And I think they did a really excellent job with it. I and I do wish they had more like uh, uh, content creators, like videos, like played, like, you know what I mean, reviews and stuff. You know Miniature what? games are harder for that. Yeah. yeah. There's so many... Things but like the little two-player pack, you think they could send that well, out to so some people? So think and of, well, not price-wise. Think about it from a reviewer standpoint. If you had the choice to review something like On the Rocks or a worker placement like one of the one we're talking about next yeah. or a miniature game, you know you're going to spend more time on that miniature game, so you're probably going to pass on that one unless you happen to be a heavy miniature person. They yeah, do I guess. Have they take more work. They do have review. gameplay videos, guys. If you yeah, go to their true. YouTube channel and stuff, there's – 
a live playthrough, a couple live playthroughs that they have. There are recorded ones that kind of give you some basics of what's going on, and then they fast forward, and you get to kind of see what's going on with it and everything. Plus, you get the added bonus of having her as the editor for a lot of those <laughs> videos. So <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see how she edits. Well, so and clearly they didn't need a lot of content creators because it's already funded. It's doing funded. fantastic, right? Yeah. right? But I just, it just as someone who isn't as well-versed as Steve Jackson, it's like, oh, I'd like to see, you know, Rado's take on this, Dan King's, or, or you know, whatever, Man vs. Meeple, or, yeah. or whoever your Tantrum House, whoever your sort of After, content creator well, of choice you're are also, though, you're commenting on Those it. content creators are not miniature game players. How many of those content creators go yeah, through and do true. X Wing and do like Attack Wing right, and do like Malfo? Uh, they, they did like Tate but this feels Grail like a very stuff, approachable yeah. miniatures game. But uh, most this of them, is. this isn't like forty k. This no, is no, something no, it's not where 40K, yeah. anyone can like kind of pick it up and run with it pretty quickly. I think that's all I'm saying. Yeah, and we did. We ended up backing this on Black Friday as well okay, because we because it was so good. Yeah, Spoiler there were so many good you're things. You're backing it. Are you I'm totally backing no, it. I mean, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not shocked. I just wasn't sure at what level she was going to back it at. Guys, we didn't discuss that part. You are interested. If you love miniature games, like this is a no-brainer. If you yeah. are interested in miniature games or you want to get people into miniature games, this is the game to do it, okay? Because one, unlike other miniature games, you're only controlling one thing. It's hugely less intimidating than any other a miniature game. 300 miniature yeah, army. You're not going to have yeah. four, five, seven, ten figures out here that you have to be like, all right, this person does this, this person does that. No. You have one car that everybody is, you know, they're using their car and they're racing around. Those little dials that you see there, they speed on them. You can adjust the speed, and it's just a little up and down movement of the dial. And that's going to be your movement. And then, you know, you have your little power core, which is kind of like your life on there. And then you have armor on the front, back, left, and right of the car. And they're all tracked on that little tiny board. You're not having to throw stuff all over with a gajillion different cards and stuff. Yep. And whenever you are putting plate on your vehicle, vehicle or a gun on your vehicle or your driver in a vehicle or anything like that you're just placing them on the sides that they are on the board so whenever you get hit on your right side you go to your right side of the board and you go here's all my armor here's my or if you're shooting from there here's you know the people i can shoot with here's what i have and everything here's the bonus i have right and all those bonuses are on cards because just kind of like right. x-wing and those where you just have a little card it's not it's not supposed to be super common. It's supposed well, to be fun. And then you're not building, you know, 10 different vehicles or 10 different items. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you're building one item. You're putting your investment all in this one thing. It's so much easier to introduce people to. And I have to say, like, I've played a lot of miniature games. And this is the only miniature game where we had, like, those crazy stand-up moments when you barely escaped somebody's vehicle, cool. like, oh, hitting you or if something. If somebody's, or like, like, using a flamethrower on, yeah. like, your driver's side and you're, like, rolling to put out fire, right? that's a pretty big <laughs> deal. Like, you're like, cool, I might, my driver might die. And then I'm, like, if your driver dies, are you just, like, dead in the water where your just car just stalls? I think, no, you're, just I don't think your driver stop. does, like, but you do lose a bunch of bonuses and then... Also, your driver is another person that can shoot. So you can equip your driver with like a hand cannon or something and <laughs> shoot out the window I just for like, like a second shot. And then you lose those abilities. I you just know? feel like the idea of just running around shredding tires with machine guns. Right. Da, 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 and just seeing them. Because if you blow out their tires, they do move slower. Right. And it, it almost stalls them out, which is... <laughs> It's realistic. And yeah. you have little, you have like little. Well, actually, it is. Cars need tires to move. I can tell you from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> you can drive, uh, you can drive a U.S. military <laughs> Humvee without tires, but not as well. You might be like louder too. Little spoilers <laughs> and stuff you can equip to your car and everything. Like they did such a great job with this game. I've, like I said, I played it at FNORDCON, and I am so so excited to bring this to my table at home because, it's. It's so much fun, and it's so much less set up than a lot of the other miniature games. Because yeah. we have miniature games, but we don't get them out that often unless we're going to be playing, like, a big, long day's well, game. Well, like, you could throw terrain worth. down on this one by putting, like, little barrels up or whatever. You could customize it, but you're not spending hours painting, like, you know, abandoned ruins and having to go to a game store to build it out. They made you everything know. here and for you. Super let's just simple. be real. We everyone who's of driving age has wanted to mount a machine gun <laughs> to the top of their car at some point to get through rush hour. <laughs> like I don't want to hurt people. Oh, just but I having it there I would probably be enough to get people to I move wanna out like, of the I way. I want to like Hollywood oh. blow cars up in front of me so that they go <laughs> boom. So boom, John is drive. saying this will be my first miniature game. Seems like it's friendly for people new to the genre, and 100% totally the vibe agree. I got too. Yeah, it's gonna be. 
super simple to get into. And like I said, the board and everything and your cards and where they're placed and everything is so intuitive and streamlined and stuff. And you're just getting a lot of fun feel from it. Like, I feel like in some miniature games, you get so bogged down by everything on the table and you're trying to go, okay, I'm going to move these guys over here and I'm going to do this over here. And then you lose track of you what you don't can get do. to enjoy. You need like, like legit what's happening military in the game to like yeah. figure out which flank <laughs> should come and when. And yeah. This one, you worry about your one car and you chase somebody around. You worry about that other car over there if you're playing four player not getting to you, you know? Like, it's more maneuvering like that. I really, you know? really like the miniatures too. The, the car miniatures, miniatures are, good. are so good. And it's scaled for Hot Wheels. So you could yeah. go out and buy a Hot Wheel oh, and nice. put it on one of these bases mm -hmm. and glue some guns onto it or however you want to customize it, add battle damage. Yeah, I know there's people that have talked about where they, they have a car from old Car Wars where they would do, they'd buy two sets of Hot Wheels and they would do one like regular and they would do one that's one all, all scratched trash. up and like you door ripped have off a, and stuff. They have like an extra in here too where yeah. you can get like smashed up cars too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's one of the like the add-ons or whatever. And those play mats that they have in this, like I've been trying to stop buying a bunch of play mats and stuff for <laughs> games because yeah, like the so play mat situation is out of control, guys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to get play mats for this one because they're sweet parking lots and stuff like that. And you can just like, like I really want the, pl the parking lot one because I feel like that would happen. You know, you're in an abandoned <laughs> parking lot and you're spinning out and like trying you to shoot people. just raided the Walmart right? and you're trying exactly. to get back to your bunker. <laughs> this is definitely the easiest way to teach your te your, tween your teenager how to drive. <laughs> you just, you get them started on Car Wars at like 9 or 10. Oh By the gosh. time they're 16 and they're ready or 15 That's ready right. to get their That's driver's right. permit. You're like, they're ready to go. With Remember, comments like that, I think we need like some legalese. Like you, this you is not uh, accepted I'm to be a way to learn. Well, here's the thing. I feel <laughs> you keep like exactly I'm one movement away from the, the vehicles at all times. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm ridiculous enough that no lawyer could be like, "Come on, common sense. <laughs> you shouldn't have listened to that guy. Why would Your you have done that?" Your 15 year old's like, "So I can have a gun while I'm driving?" No, no, that's no, not no, what no, I'm no, saying. That's no, not no. what I'm saying. Not for shooting Focus cars. Focus on driving. <laughs> you can have, of course, the car gun, which is different. All right, Greg. I still have a car phone. Greg, who's not a miniatures player, would you back that? Uh, this is one where, yeah, I'm interested. I, I, I want to see if Stephanie looks like she'd be into it, but if she is, I'm down. Yeah. Especially with that $50 pledge and the fact right? that I know I can add things later. This is pretty exciting. It does. It makes it really fun. And it plays really great at two-player, really great at four. Like, it's it's good. You can play teams, all sorts of craziness. Yeah, Dr. Gorha. You could go bigger with it if you wanted to. But oh, I don't absolutely. know if I would want it. It would just er, stretch out the time. Well, yeah. If they you say go, it like, plays six players best at four. So, like, you technically can play at six, but, like, yeah. The mechanics are not as good yeah. at six. It stretches out. You so you want to do probably too turns. much like king making with six. Yeah, too well, yeah. you get too much time in between. But yeah. I can see playing this at four. Like we used to do with the attack wing, and you would just do two versus two, and that's a lot of fun too. Where you're trying to like yeah. pincer oh, yeah. move somebody and take them out, while the other players like driving around trying to like shoot you from behind and stuff, and you're like, you have one person geared to shoot out tires. Find the weak spot. Well, you have one person geared to shoot out tires, and the other person geared for flamethrowing. Yeah. Like, just slow them down and set them on fire. Which, if you've never had a sandwich that involves flamethrower on one side, people in the middle, and machine guns on the other side, I mean, that's a that's an American sandwich. If I've ever... American sandwich. Put some American cheese With all the flamethrower talk, I think I want, like, a Mandalorian theme. There you go. Oh, you could paint him like I that? I want like that a little so baby sweet. Yoda coming out the back oh, window. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> I want to get one of those baby on board stickers for the back. Yes. All right, Dr. Baby Roy Yoda Hog. on board. Yeah, I would back this. I love car combat, both in real life <laughs> and yes. in this. I, I, will I won't lie to you. I love derby stuff. And when right, I had demolition the derby, yeah. When I had the opportunity to ram a vehicle with my Humvee, I took it because <laughs> you only are given so many chances to do those the things. The ram vehicles, To do yeah. those things and not face repercussions. <laughs> You're right. You know, I've lived, I feel like I haven't lived now. You haven't. Because I have never been able to ram a car be, without repercussions. Be an 18-year-old yeah. and be told to get somewhere in a Humvee where there's like not proper road markings or proper road signs and everything. You will find <laughs> a way as an 18-year-old to push cars with a Humvee. It's amazing. It's Top notch. See all the off roading except without hurting your vehicle at home. You okay? just <laughs> have to join the military. That's the only that's the only downside. And you might war. die. That's yeah. the downside. <laughs> There's a little war involved. Yeah. But other than the wars, it was fine. Yeah. Just I'm a smidge of war. The car part was a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm gonna obviously say that I'm I've already backed this campaign, guys. I've like I said, I've been super excited about it and I'm excited to introduce it to other people who are gonna be new to the miniature style game because I really do feel yeah. like this is just You guys are gonna teach this to me, I'm excited. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Gonna totally it's teach you really this. Easy yeah. To play. Really great. And 
like what other miniature style game allows you to have here's your two player base here's this usually the miniature style games they go here's your starting set and guess what? You can't even play with that starting set. Go buy some more minis, guys. Yeah, like. I don't want to talk about them, but that's <laughs> – and card games have been really bad at that, too. It's like the Destiny card game at first was like, yeah, cool, you have to have, like – I forget what it is. You have to like, 40 cards to play, and our starter set comes with 30. Yeah, and you're like, so oh. So, like, I can't even go to a so. store and open this up and play in a tournament. Like, even with your starter set, I'd yeah. have to immediately buy boosters and start trying to shove them in. Like, that's not – This is not like that. You can just – you can get – the two-player set and just play and be on your way and you could even if they were doing like a tournament style something like you could play with that like that's fine like they have everything you need in yeah you need in Th that because this is going to be set, much so. more skill based than it is anything else because it's like the way you set up the car and the way you position your car which oh is what yeah. miniatures are that's what miniatures it almost are. doesn't matter what army you run as long as you think enough ahead to try to like out with your opponent by positioning and using what you have going for you. Positioning and lucky dice There's rolls. There's also a lot of <laughs> miniatures games that like they fade out quickly. I mean, yeah. You don't get the impression that's going to happen here. No, I don't think so. Because they've been reworking it for so long. You know, it seems like they're well, going to yeah, support it. You know? Well, it's just that they knew that they're like, okay, well, let's put out something for this generation. They've yeah. put out one like pretty much every year since yeah. they've oh, come out. Like every like ten years, they're like. F this is the baby boomer generation <laughs> car wars. This FYI is the millennial guys. car wars. <laughs> so. You don't have to assemble these. They're pre-assembled. So nice. for those of you that are miniature nice. players, okay? It makes it nice and easy for you All guys. Right. So before we get into the, the rest of them. Okay. Oh, are we making predictions? I want to do the top picks, right? Because I didn't want to do it with Car Wars. So I think my Dang top it. pick okay. for you, <laughs> well, because Car Wars was too easy. I knew you already backed that okay. one. So, so I didn't like want to So like her cheat. second choice. My second choice. Yeah, I think not including Car Wars. My notes here. All right. That you would do Red Outpost. I think that's your most exciting one. And I think for Greg... It's Red Outpost. That's I can my neither prediction. confirm nor deny. My prediction All right, I'm going to say outpost. Greg, Red Outpost, Dr. Glory Hog. I'm going to say Divinity, Original Sin. Okay, what do you got, Greg? I'm going to go against the grain and say Glory for you and Red Outpost Ooh. for you. Ooh, Ooh, I, I think you might enjoy the idea of like hey, being Hi, a knight. Kabuki kid. You know, and battling your way to prestige Ooh. in the Middle Ages. Are you saying that Dr. Glory Hog wants all the glory? He, exactly. <laughs> when I saw that we were revealing glory, I'm like, of course. Oh, Has there ever absolutely. been a game absolutely. title more fit for this show? <laughs> next week we're reviewing Hound and the next week Hog. Yeah. If it, there's been pig games. I've been really tempted to get them on the list, but <laughs> All right, they've so been mostly card games. <laughs> next up, we have Red Outpost by Imperial Publishing. This is for two to four players. It's going to last about 30 to 60, 60 minutes. This is sort of like a communist SimCity but the board game, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Alternate history. <laughs> it's not even a really a worker placement. It's, it's really interesting. Management. It's everybody's going to be moving the workers on the board. All the resources collected are shared by everybody, and you're trying to keep your people nice and happy so you don't take negative points, well, guys. Well, okay. The people that you have the most influence on happy, <laughs> right. and the That's people right. that you have the most influence on. And you want to make those people off. really yeah. crappy, we okay? We want to tick off the people I think you're going <laughs> to use But not a lot. so bad that when I need to use them, they're unusable <laughs> right. because they're too angry. Yeah. So, oh, and Kabuki Kid, I thought that you weren't going to back Car Wars. You got to let me know that why you ended up choosing that because I know last week you were like uncertain about that. But we'll go we'll go back to this one here. So, Red Outpost is well, okay, Greg. What were your first impressions? Well, I like the cover. It's like screen <laughs> side, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It does. Less like next, it but evoke, yeah, but it evokes that kind of feeling. I I love the theming here. I love the uh, this alternate history, the idea that like the space race was a sham, and the Soviets, not only did they make it to the moon, but past the moon, and they found an <laughs> inhabitable planet, this and they're already terraforming and working on it. This is historical. This is Mars. They're on Mars. Oh, wow. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they started – the Russians have been terraforming yeah. Mars since 88. The <laughs> lizard people. <laughs> so, yeah, I love the theming right off the bat. I love the, like – and as I, I saw the quotes that were like, oh, a unique take on worker placement. I'm like, really? There's like a, a billion worker placements. But as you're going through it, it really does seem like they've found a new take on worker placements. So I was impressed because this is such a like, I mean, I like the genre, but you got to admit it's a little played out, right? There's like yeah. dozens of them coming out every year. Uh, so I was impressed that they actually did seem to have like a unique take on it. And like you said, it's, it's not so much about the worker placement. It's about the sort of these sort of tug of war, sort of push pull tracks on these characters that you're trying to manipulate. 
So yeah, I was impressed All off right. the bat. Dr. Glory Hog, what did you think Good about this? Good first impression. So worker placement games are like one of my favorite genre, but we do have a lot of them, right? So they usually have to have something. So like Everdale has kind of more like a limited resource feel. Asking for Troubles is just theme. Champions of Midgard is like super theme. There's nothing like in particular about them that's like super unique. But Architects has like the whole, the more people there you go, mm -hmm. they go yeah, there, the more stuff you get. But then you can that. lock them up easier. And Lockup has hidden worker placement right. stuff where you flip them out. And so if it doesn't have something unique, I'm not interested in it. This one, the way it plays out, looks really, really interesting. It's got great backer numbers. It's like so. It's like thirty dollars for the regular, thirty-five for the yeah. player. Yeah, crazy yeah. Yeah. The deluxe, which is just going to be kind of custom cut meeples. I like the idea that you're using community stuff and you're trying to like. It's almost more like worker placement, but also area control and then people management because you're trying to like have influence on certain cards. Uh, but then if I see like, oh, Greg's got influence on like, say, like the bureaucrat, then I'm going to like start using the bureaucrat to fish, which is going to piss the bureaucrat <laughs> off because that bureaucrat does not want to fish. The fisher no. wants to fish. He doesn't know how to bait right. and, then, and then you might be like, oh, yeah, you like that? Well, I'm going to send the fisher to, <laughs> I don't know, the camps or the coal mines. And you're like, oh, my God, not the coal mines. So I, I like the idea of it. I don't particularly like communism necessarily. Make sure you guys quote me on that one. <laughs> but I, uh, I really like the idea that this one doesn't feel like it's just a regular worker place with just a theme, and that's it. It really feels like there's more going on to it. And I like games that give you the positive-negative aspect where you're like, you can do this thing, but you're going to take a negative, and you have to kind of really judge, like, when is it worth taking that? When is it not worth taking that? And I like that balance, that kind of well, positive-negative balance. Well, and also the, the balance. balance between doing something just to screw everyone else or screw someone else versus help yourself, so right, which I think is going to be – Do you want to go for the victory points or do you want to, like, stop you Or do you want to – yeah, points. yeah. If, so I can, if I can screw you enough, then I, that's I win by battle. default. Yeah. We have some interesting comments about the artwork. So Petter is saying that cover looked good, but the board looked meh. I like the board. And Mar Martin is saying that the board location artwork reminds them a little bit of Architects of the West Kingdom. I can I see that. I really like – that sort of like softer, I don't know. It's renaissance -y a yeah, type sort of I feel. feel like with the art in it and everything. It reminds me you of Stone know? Age too, like or or um, oh shoot, what was the other one I was gonna say? Uh, I can't remember. Now. Oh, uh, Pillars of the Earth. You know where it's like uh, this good top, book. this top the down. The book did it better. <laughs> the book did it better. It was a good book. Where it's like this top down view of like the civilization, and you're seeing all the buildings and stuff. So it reminds me of those two games also. And I think the softer feel to everything, like it creates that sort of like. Hey, everything is okay, you know. Or but is like, it? or is it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Sort of like thing, you know. Fallout style propaganda, right? You know, that's just right, like. Exactly. Remember, eat your red medicine to be the best worker <laughs> you can be. And you're like, I will definitely eat my red. I medicine. like the tongue-in-cheek <laughs> theming in this. I don't think this is meant to be like a promotion of communism. Oh. Like from the starting video, you can yes, tell it's kind of like. It's Funny. Things aren't yeah. really working in this civilization. Yeah. Like stuff like games like A Wonderful World kind of did that where you're like like that kind of communist super future where you're like, oh, the people must – or Euphoria is another good one where you're like, yeah, yeah you want to have lots yes, of workers, but if yeah. you have too many workers, they yeah. start talking and, and then you don't they, and you don't too smart. Then they don't. go on strike because you <laughs> need yeah, to yeah. dumb down your workers. And, you know, yeah, this definitely has a Euphoria feel. That's a good comparison. Makes me feel better. Comparison. That is good. Feel better. When I can control these little minions. <laughs> <laughs> Get the peasants to work. And it impressed a lot of reviewers and stuff. I was going to say, the yeah. Uh, yeah, the other thing this is. This one does have a lot of quotes. And, yeah, is and that I've only heard really, yeah. really good things about this. Like, really good commentary. I'm interested in the mechanics of this. The mechanics look super great, and the fact that it's not really a battle of how many resources you can get or anything like that. It's more a battle of just how you can affect other people's people and who's influencing this. But it almost becomes too. like a political sort of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And but they're your people too, right. so you got to be careful. Like it's, it's very really interesting. And I can see really sticking yourself, where you're thinking, I don't think I'm going to need to use that person. And then yeah. You're stuck in a position where you do, and you're like, ah. And it's got one. Of those why did I bum that guy out so much? It's got yeah. one of those <laughs> great mechanisms where it's like you want to donate crystals, right, in order to like for the betterment of the overall overall community. But it's going to take you time to get those. So you're like, I'm spending time to do this. Is there a better way for me yeah. to get victory points? Right. And, and how happy? Like, do I want to spend my turn to like send all the workers to like. I know, like the log where they get to sing Kumbaya and like have <laughs> s'mores and raise everyone's happiness. Yeah, or like is a, it better like to like, hall you or is it better right? to send them to the mines? Yeah. Like, you know, you really got to like kind of, yeah, yeah. I a lot of push and pull. It seems like a good mix of, I think, solid art, fun theme, uh, innovative mechanics, and like a crazy good price point. So this is, this right. is 
to uh, spoil so? alert. This was the one I'm most interested is in it? of the four. Is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 It, just, it just feels like it's going to get to the table, <laughs> right? It's yeah. not crazy complex. It's like 30 minutes. You can minutes teach it quickly. 16. You can play yeah. it a bunch of times in a row really fast. Like It, it seems like something that would, so would you actually back get this. played. Yeah, I think so. All right. And let's see here. The push and pull of affecting characters seems to be interesting to me when I don't like worker placement victory point me mechanics there normally. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Okay, so the push so and pull is like, yeah, over, what is it, over something. Well, like it clips <laughs> the fact that you don't. There you go. It's over, yeah, it's like pushing over the fact that you don't yeah. like those, those things. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay. It eclipses the sun. Dr. Glory Hog, oh. what did you think of this? Or are you backing this? Yes. Yes. Okay. You're backing 100%. this as well. Yeah. Thirty-five. Because you okay. gotta go to okay. the, the, the Lux. Oh. oh. I even tried to set you guys up with, with guys the stutter. The with the stutter. Da, 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 yeah, that was your cue. Let's guys. fix Sorry. that. Sorry. Okay. Post. Okay. There oh, is yeah, no yeah. post. It's live. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> but for five. I thought this was the rehearsal. <laughs> for five dollars to get like die cut, like you know miniatures or however they cut them, like wood cut miniatures and stuff, yeah. just little slight upgrades. For five bucks, it seems like stupid. Yeah, the price too. point Absolutely. seems really crazy the reasonable on this. The price point is really Why good Why didn't they this? sell this for 50 I feel like it would still fun. Like You think so? Yeah, I think they've yeah. just – this is very reasonable. I, I could kind of appreciate that they're like, hey, this is what it takes. Yep. Uh, then 100%. I think you know, that when I was – We're still making a profit. When I was looking through Maybe this – Maybe they are communists. Oh. No. Maybe they're not making profit. Maybe this gets them at zero. Maybe this is for the good of the Maybe people. Maybe it costs exactly $30. The good of the people. <gasps> is this propaganda? Are they trying to, are they trying to, they're trying to raise our morale. Are they making it cheap? So they can send so us to the mines. So they can brainwash us and send us to the mines? They're sending us to the mines for sure. And by the way, I have free comments I'd for both of you. Okay. No. <laughs> I would be no good in the mines. I have a bad back. Me too. Yeah. When I was looking at this campaign, I was like, oh, you know, this looks really interesting. And we were going into reviews and commentary and, like, the mechanics of everything. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went to the price portion. Because I always look at the price portion last because I don't necessarily want that to influence I if I like the game first. or not. I look first. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it to influence whether I like the game or not, you know. Because I can be like, yep, that's out of my range already. Not right. worth looking at it. I was super, super surprised by the price point <sighs> on this. I was like, holy crap, that's it? Like, this is a for sure back for me. Because, like, yeah. it sounds – the mechanics are sound. The – uh, overall theme and everything is fun and exciting in the way that like it's different and stuff and like it'll pull like well it's just, it's just new you know like yeah, the theme is new and stuff with that you know well, the like mechanics there's been so and everything. many worker yeah. placements to see people that review worker placements constantly be like oh this is pretty cool yeah yeah is is something because even I've uh, gotten to a point where like sometimes I'm like okay and I want something other than a worker placement usually those deluxe ones do go up ten dollars but this one's five so yeah we're doing deluxe on this even for ten is it. we're doing like deluxe deluxes now are like twenty deluxe bucks more five. every time now I think me and yeah. my comrades will enjoy this <laughs> 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 all right next step Stock guys comrades. we have Speaking divinity of checking the prices original sin this is by Larian Studios LLC <laughs> this is for one to four players you're gonna be playing this about sixty minutes plus on this. This is a story-driven campaign-based game. One of the really cool features of this game is the combat system that they have on this dial here and how you're not actually laying out terrain tiles, but where you put things on this is how you are going to move through the game and affect different things, which I thought was really interesting. We'll swing by that here and again. And the other thing is the choices you make in this game, you end up getting a code that you put in on the company website, and then that influences the next game that they ma make and the next story chapters. Oh, so, so like I think I missed that detail. When they make this, that's the whole idea of the chronicle. Yeah, system, is when they make the second one or the next expansion, if ninety percent of the people burn the inn, and only that's ten percent of carry it carry over, it, mm. they'll carry over. Yeah, so I do have a little caveat to that. Okay. real quick. The only ask, the only issue I can see with that, if you have this big dramatic moment where you decide to let the inn burn. And the people are screaming, and you're like, "We can't save them all." And the, but like the majority of people are good, and they don't do that. They save the inn. Mm -hmm. But then like since the people, most people saved it, and your group didn't. Like the next. Are you gonna chapter, feel super bad? You're like, well, oh, no, not even feeling super bad. But then like the <laughs> next, the next story that comes out when the inn is like been saved, and you're like, 
No, I distinctly remember that thing burning down. <laughs> it, that would kind it's of an almost take away. Reality. Yeah, it would kind of take <laughs> away from like this big moment your group had a little bit. If I mean, that could be a nitpicky thing. Yeah, I can but see that. It's only no, gonna do that legit. for the minority of whoever chose that. Yeah, but, but I I that's the whole point, you know. Support Derek the expects to be in the minority. Does he? <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> I have found that these types of games that I tend to go down paths that like other people don't. Paths, yeah. You know what? Sometimes if you get to the end of a legacy game, you realize that we could have done this a different way. <laughs> <laughs> Martin says it's interesting that the video game company is actually putting out the board game. Don't get that much crossover like that anymore. Yeah, they are. This is the actual video game company that is putting it forward instead of like going through another entity or anything right. like that and handing the name over. So that is really cool. I think that's better, don't you? Because you feel I think like so it's too. probably more likely like you get a the passion feeling. project. Yeah. And you get the feeling oh, of it, I think, more, passion. you know? I mean, right? they I mean, they, they LARPed it all out. They all dressed up for it and everything. Yeah. Like, it's, this is 100% Now, I don't have any familiarity with the, with the video game, so I, I don't know if you guys do. I'm curious if anyone in the chat does. <laughs> like, does this feel like it's going to be worth doing <laughs> ver some versus people, playing the video some game? Some people just want to watch the inburn. Yeah, I was going to say, Dr. Glory Hog just wants to watch the inburn. That's true. And Why then so serious? Petter's Listen, John, <laughs> you can't save everybody. Petter's saying, this is my normal Called preferred type damage. of game. Heavy story, but definitely way out of my price range for games this year. Okay, well, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, because this one's spendy. over 100 bucks for like the base it pledge. It is. It's $120 yeah. for the base pledge in this, but it I think it falls right in between because you're looking at those Tainted Grail sort of games. I mean, we've reviewed a bunch yeah. of different story-based <laughs> games <laughs> yeah, like this year. Sometimes two yeah. a week. Pe let me tell you, people are writing some serious stories right now, okay? <laughs> like I like the video on this. Well, so then it becomes a question of, like, which ones do you back, right? Because yeah. I, I was following a post where somebody was talking about they had backed one game, and they, they mentioned four other games. Yeah. And they're like, which other campaign games should I yeah. back? I want to buy two this year. And I was just like, there's so many, not even including the ones that he's missed, that I'm like, I don't know how to answer that like, and give yeah. you a good right. opinion because there's so many. Well, here's the thing. is We're going to touch on how this is different yeah. than the other ones. And one of the differences in this particular one is I really like the characters. The standard characters are not like standard characters that you play with, you know? Like you have your human here, but then you also have the red prince here, which is like some sort of lizard. Dragonborn yeah, or some sort like Soren. You have a uniqueness of backstories where you're not just going off of here's your elf here's character, a here's, here's your half, a yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know. Plus, the video for this is actually kind of funny, where they're like, the video was "You really could have saved me a different way. Why'd you turn me into like a frog? It was just so you could take all my loot." And I was like, "Yeah, it was so yeah. you could take your." I loot. feel Maybe. like you can. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that you can be like maybe evil or something. I well, don't know. Well, this last guy doesn't look super <laughs> traditionally <laughs> Most good. Most of these games do let you kind of go that evil route. Right? Okay, so. Well, they turned him into a chicken and stole all his gold. That's not exactly <laughs> like, you know, it's lawful. It's realistic, at least. <laughs> it, it, my, my concern with all these is, is it really going to be as immersive as they are making it look like it's going to be? You know? And so if it is, this this looks great. But, you know, you have to, like, play it. You know? And with this price point, once again, you know, you want to play it. This the one has an IP too. Like it's got yeah, that's true. Yeah. It does have an, an intellectual IP. property that like you. And if it's you not like something it, that I'm an, uh, yeah. aware of. So like, uh, if it was, I might be like, yeah, I'm all in, absolutely. The but and the video makes it look like it's super immersive. I mean, that's what they're trying to convey by having them like jump back into the world and be all dressed up. But I just don't know if it will really will be or not. The and other so that's the big question mark. The other thing that's really different about this game right here is this clock board system. Now, it doesn't spin, guys, okay? Which uh, is always a disappointment. I'm out. There's no spin. No. <laughs> so, this is going to track your locations in the board where your characters are placed and stuff, as well as like your combat system, which I thought was super cool in this, it does okay? It's like pretty intuitive. So, you're going to have your rounds and stuff like that that are on your little clock portion there, and each of those card spots are going to have different locations. And when monsters show up, they go in right. different locations. And then whatever location you're at, you're closest to the one to your left and right and the one across from you. So if you want to move right. across the board and to the left, you got to go over across one. And then you got to start going around the board a couple times to the left or whatever. So it really, it's not the basic thing that I've seen where you put out the little tiles you know and then you're proceeding through right. the dungeon with your fog war like this makes it interesting and not only does it make it interesting it makes it almost puzzly 
Huh. You okay. know, like if I'm doing a ranged combat or something, I'm like, oh, I can't reach him from here. Well, if I move over to left one, then I'll be across from him. That might be better. Or maybe I should move up on over here. Like that was really interesting rather than just tiles on Right. Let's kind of play it out. It feels played out. Yeah. I'll just flip a tile. Oh, now you're in this room. Mm -hmm. Run up, hit the guy. Okay. Lazy Good Susan job. to the rescue for the board. Exactly. I'm going <laughs> to add one of those to our yeah. Amazon wish list. For <laughs> you guys have to get one. You need to get like all different sizes, personalized with the Glory Hound logo. And then we'll just do like you the, should sell em. the little. <laughs> Glory Hound, Lazy Susan. We'll just do like the little video the of us hound. spinning the game on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> the Lazy the Lazy Hound. Huh? The lazy okay. Hound with a slow motion video of the Asking for Troubles pieces going flying just or just, or spin just it fast. <laughs> Glory Susan. That's no, no, Lazy Lazy Dr. Glory Hog, I know this is a particular theme of game that you really, really enjoy. What were your thoughts? So this one is tough because I, I do really like these types of dungeon crawls and stuff. And I know if you guys have watched, I've passed on a lot of them. Um, and you can ask Lately her. Lately we have, yeah. You can ask her how much I have cried so about many. Tainted <laughs> Grail and oh how yeah. much I really <laughs> want it. <laughs> how much I regret it. Your mascara's <laughs> running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a remembrance tattoo. Um, it's <laughs> so I have passed on a lot of them recently. I don't know if I'm 100% 100% sold on this one, but that being said, I have freed up a lot of time by finishing my bachelor's degree, <laughs> and so we've gotten <laughs> into more two-hour games like we've like Wasteland Express, Barrage. Barrage yeah. We finally are getting those to the table where before it was only like hour games or less, basically, except for weekends. So I could definitely be tempted. I'm just not 100% sold yet, but I'm like right on that edge there where I'm like, I'm really tempted to buy. It's one of those things I'd have to just honestly, if I'm just going to be you know, speaking to you from person to person, I just need to check the finances to see if we can fit it in with the other stuff we're currently backing. And if we can, I could definitely see backing it. Robert White says it's a try before buy for me. Yeah. Greg, what were your impressions? Try before buy? Yeah, just because, like I said, I, I don't know if it's going to. You don't typically play these types of games. Though. Right. I don't. And so it has to really stand out in some way. And so, you know, I'd want to try it and see if this really does something different, if it's more immersive than how the average how Dungeon Crow. How far are you guys in Gloomhaven? <laughs> How far are you in Gloomhaven? I mean, it's, I think it's the same answer. scenario. I think it's the same Because we're playing answer. it together. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, they just don't get played, you know? I, I, I can honestly say, though, we've gotten through Arcadia Quest, through the vast majority. Oh, yeah. Through all the first box. Yeah. And they've, not the other three expansions we've got. So <laughs> but still, it's an investment for, for hurricane season. You know, I tend to play these games at other people's houses. If I'm being completely honest. Right. When someone like says, like, hey, let's play Descent, you know, and they pull it out and they set it up and we go through it. And it's great. But I don't need to own these very often, you know. And so, if I'm ever going to buy this, I'd have to play it and be like, "Wow, this there's something different here." You know, there's some reason for me to spend this kind of money to bring this in and have this game that's not going to get to the table. That I'm kind often. of laughing because we actually have Seventh Continent on our table right now. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it was set up last night, but we just didn't think we'd have enough time to like learn it. And, and that's play another it one. Like time. I played it because someone brought it to my house. There you know? are but I'm not going to buy Seventh Continent. Another couple things. So, for me, I. I'm excited about this game, and I do think that they did some really cool things that a lot of other companies did not do. Yeah. And it's probably because they are part of a video game. They come from a different world. Yeah, and then they have more that they can spend on these things. The metal coins fo from Norse Foundry, freaking awesome, I have guys. Norse Foundry coins, oh my just gosh. generic random ones that I bought because they're so cool. To be able to add something like that to your campaign is super exciting. And then, like... There was something the else bags. down you here. Just past the cool oh yeah, no, bags. these ones here. They have actual little bags with all the little art on them and yeah. everything. And then there was oh Side the va quest, the Vallejo kind of the Vallejo paint set. Whenever I saw the Vallejo paint set, I was like, holy crap! Why do more game companies not do this? Because basically, I don't know if you guys it's a know, partnership. You've got it's a Vallejo, which is a really great paint painting yeah, brand right, definitely right. top five and they make a bunch of different colors or put a bunch of different colors of paints together that fit that particular game so like so uh come on has yeah. done that which is really good where they're like this is the zombicide set and you're like okay yeah. so right. you can feel everything's kind of uniform but right. still unique exactly right. and i thought that was such so a cool painted thing things will match the artwork and all that right yeah. so like yes yeah, so yeah. you don't have cards that are like yeah. dramatically different than right because even like when we went and did arcadia quest it when we because we started painting those you have to like look at the card and be like okay well that there's red there's this but you oh. can never match it up the and same they way. already had the broken token box for it i was like what yeah 
Like, that's awesome. That yeah, means they already you, sent the game to Broken Token yeah, and got all that taken care of. Can you imagine getting it with that immediately? And right? Just and being able to put like, all that stuff in we there? We got Gloomhaven, like, and we made our own solution that sucked, and the box set really <laughs> high. <laughs> and then we ended up buying the folded spaces, like, insert for it, and then had to redo it. So we've actually <gasps> spent more time organizing Gloomhaven than we played it. Yeah. That's so the problem with these games. That can happen. And we have digital Gloomhaven, too, on Steam. And Robert says, I keep going back to Car Wars. I might have to go and back that. Robert, do it. You were very convincing. Do it. I'm so excited about Car Wars. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait to play that game. <laughs> well, again, because you've played it. <laughs> All right. So I'm curious to w see what you think of this one. Going into this particular campaign, I was like, all right, I'm not familiar with the video game entity, although I have actually been looking at it because I was on, like, my Switch the other day, and I was like, oh, you know, this What's is originally this? from. If, yeah, because I was going through, and I was like, wait a second, isn't that a board game? Didn't I just see it on Kickstarter? I was like, oh, wait, this is an actual video game. I hadn't gone all the way into the Kickstarter yet. Yeah. But And I'm always – I'm I've been skeptical this year of these storytelling style games because there are so many of them and it's yeah. like how do you choose it's been 12 months of it between Ever since all of them it's yeah, just they're just every, they're every i can week. only play so many story Bandwagon. driven campaigns you know yes. i can just physically only play so many story driven campaigns we've probably reviewed over 40 of them i would honestly it's say. crazy like yeah, it, it honestly is show. Yeah. yeah there's almost one every yeah. week if not and two and there's usually two or three i don't put on there right yeah i have to say with this particular one it's a glut the things that impressed me the most were that dial system on where you're going through and the different Which places and are going to be really there. Unique, yeah. And it creates a sort of puzzling system. And then the fact that you are still using cards and stuff like that to help with combat and everything, because that's really important for me as well in those games. Like I don't want, I don't want just dice rolling combat for everything. You know, there has to be something else and it has to be strategic movement or it has to be like, yeah. you know, a card based system instead of dice rolling and stuff. I feel like since the video game company is producing this, they're going to remain true, of course, to all of oh yeah. all of the backstory and everything. And right, I'm excited. The, the lore is set. It's not like they're just putting it together. I'm excited to play a board game that's like has a Dragon Age aspect to it. Because in Dragon Age, the video game, you know, you could go ahead and play the game. And then their next game, you can import, like, all the cool stuff that you did. And then those characters are going to, like, react to, like, what happened in the game. And I think that's really cool in a board game. Like, I want to back this, guys. Because really? <laughs> I do. Because the players, the characters are unique and different. The yeah. style of combat system is unique and different. They have a bunch of really cool upgrades that, like, you don't usually see that's going to make it more yeah. immersive and everything. And then just the fact that I can go ahead and at the end of the campaign put in something and then carry that over to, like, the next game, that makes it a little bit more interesting cool. than everything else. And I'm assuming online they're going to chart that. So you can go through, and like you do on a video game, and yeah. be like, oh, who made these choices? Blah, 28% of people burned that in. <laughs> suckers like you know yeah like, yeah and i love i burn that in <laughs> i love well i love doing that in video games you know so why wouldn't i love doing that in a board game well it does seem like you're gonna be able to plug into a community more than, right. you, than you do with the average board game right yeah so i thought those aspects were really interesting and it made me want to go ahead and back it and i think you pointed out the attention to detail with like them already having the broken token insert ready and all that kind of stuff it feels like it's they've, ready. they've thought of everything which means they probably means the design and the story and the choices are also that much better than well, just the average can. And and some of these are come out with a company you've never even heard of the company. It's their first thing. You're yeah. like, uh, this is too much of a risk. Whereas here, you know, it does feel like they they have they've thought of everything. And they've had that chance to already they've unveil had that story. Yeah. So like, you just yeah. feel like they're just going to keep. Going and it's a with passion it. project. It's not just a cash grab. You know, right. it's yeah. So thanks thanks for joining us, Martin. We will catch you later and. Uh, yeah, Petter did you sings see what Petter like? Yeah, so many campaigns. Etherfields, oh my Dice Throne Adventure, Osworn, Midaria, oh. back this year. Just, just had just Tainted Grail come in. Yeah, Frost Haven for next year. And I totally I, we've get you. Some of those totally for get sure. you. Like, I liked all those. There's too I, I many good ones. I don't think I was in on Midaria, but I, I know I liked Osworn. I was really tempted by right. that one. Right, well, we had looked at Osworn. I mean, we talked about all of those. We definitely campaigns. did Dice Throne Adventures. Yeah. 
Like Etherfields, we were doing that one. Like, I mean. I'm going to get Tainted Grail, guys. It's just gonna are happen. you? Are you going to get yeah. Tainted Grail? <laughs> it's inevitable. It's, it's going to happen, yeah. I've, I'm going to say I'd back that. i good things about it. All right. Moving on, our last one of the day. We have Glory, and this a is game of nights. a game of nights by Strategos Games or Strategos. Strategos, yeah, Strategos it's almost like Games, Strategos. yeah. Strategos. And this is for one to four players. It's going to last about thirty minutes. This is where you're a knight, and you're going to be collecting things from like romance. They have it listed as like romance or romantic relationships or whatever. You get but gifts. it's basically, yeah, you just getting stuff from people. It's getting, yeah. well, you're getting the favors from right. different houses and stuff, which is legit. That's what they would do. You would get like a scarf to tie on to your, kind of your build lance. Or to kind of build yourself up and everything. And then you're going to be trying to have combat against different people in this and then win your way up the bracket. Now, go ahead. I was going to say, as far as the favors go, listen, if a pretty girl, pretty <laughs> sorry, a pretty woman was to give you Walking a, down the a beautiful <laughs> scarf that is perfumed, you're going to fight harder because you have something to win for. A perfume scarf? For the beautiful How's woman that that's protect on the other you? end. It oh makes I you fight. So, no, okay. <laughs> no, it's a morale realistically, thing. Realistically, it's a morale thing. having a girlfriend to come back to after the war gives you kind of a reason to keep going when sometimes you'd be like, I could just stop here. What's the point? Yeah. Like, I wasn't going back home to my mom. I was coming home to you. Like, I think if I was just going back home to, like, live in my mom's, that that would not be as not as exciting. I would have been like, yeah, sure, shoot me. Nah, I don't nah. even care at this point. It's morale. It's morale. It is. It's a, yeah. it's a thing. That's why you get letters. The interesting part of this game is the fact that after you do those battles and you can expend certain equipment pieces and stuff like that to do better. So say you roll and you have really great rolls and you don't have to expend anything. Then you just are upgraded that much more for the next tier. Mm -hmm. However, if you do expend those things, you're almost at a disadvantage for the next tier, you know? And then you're working really hard to try to yeah. get those other things to try to build yourself back up and stuff. You break your sword like right. on the first go round, you know? And that's going to be yeah. a really, really interesting because part of this game. Because they're simulating an actual jousting tournament. Right. Which is real. Like, you can always get another lance, but at a certain point in time, you can't even do that. And mm -hmm. then you're down to whatever you've yeah, got your left. your helmet's all smashed up, your breastplate's caved in. I'm not like some historian, so don't, don't misquote me on that, but... In movies, they usually just do like one pass. It's it. Usually, it's multiple passes. Yeah. You're getting dinged and banged up. And, you know, it comes down to sword work sometimes if you both get knocked off your horse. It's yeah. swords and shields Absolutely. or it's mace or whatever. All these different things. And this has got a real tournament bracket style. Like you would – I mean, it's where they – this is how they came up with baseball brackets is based off of these types of tournaments. This is like one of the first games that – that had a tournament style yeah, thing. Yeah, this that was had early sports. You had spectators. <laughs> yeah, you had all of that. This stuff. was football back then. You know, this is like people turned tuned in to so see we and have root for their team. You know? We have John, which says back this day one, love the theme and the look of it. At Dr. Glorhog, I believe they'll open up the pledge manager for Tainted Grail for Wave Two for current backers. If you know someone who has backed it, you Ooh. could possibly get in that way. I and could then probably just also message Martin Poole and be like, D I need a copy of this. I'll <laughs> give you money. <laughs> Here, throw money at him. <laughs> like, you, you, he works for Waking Realms now. I'll take so my money. Like, yeah, can you just get me that game? And then Petter saying, waiting for the Knight's Tale theme. That That'd would be, be really cool. Well, that would be, that would be so yeah, much fun. I don't fun. know how they'd be able to get that with Heath Ledger and everything, <laughs> but still, that would be pretty cool. Rest in peace. So this particular game, Pour although... Out your chalice for... Well, <laughs> you know what? Okay, go, Greg, go ahead. What, what are your impressions and everything? Um... Uh, I like the theming. I like the idea of it. For some reason, though, as I went through this campaign, maybe I didn't spend enough time on it. Yeah. I didn't feel like I got a good feel for exactly what I'm doing and how it works and the mechanics of it. Of all the games, I felt like I had the least grasp on exactly how it worked. Right. I know the basic idea of it, but I, I just, because of that sort of, I don't know, it was my own fault or whatever, I just didn't quite grasp how they'd fit all this stuff into like a 30-minute package as well because it says it's only a 30-minute game. So I'm like, oh, you're like upgrading and, and winning the favor of people and getting gifts and then implementing that stuff and all this in 30 minutes. Like I just kind of felt like because I couldn't quite grasp it, I want to try it and see if it works. But I do like the theming of it. I think the artwork is pretty good. Uh, there's just a lot of like cool parts to it, but I just don't know if it adds up to a hole that I'm going to really dig or not. I just mm -hmm. couldn't quite – grasp it if that makes sense dr glory hog so a little background on this one greg you were almost right this is not my favorite but <laughs> this one i thought the theme would speak to you though it does so the thing about this one though is this one has been on our list for at least two weeks 
Um, if not, yeah, maybe three. Yeah, there's only three days left on this yeah, one, right? Yeah, that's a good I've So be aware of that if I've you're been pushing her to put this one on the list because based off of it being like such an anticipated game by like Dice Tower and, yeah. and, and board, game board, board Game Geek and – the theme of it sounds really good. I agree with you. And it's already been backed like in a Polish Kickstarter. I don't know if it's still Kickstarter, but just in Poland mm, or whatever. But right. this game's been backed. There's already been stuff that's been unlocked and everything. Yeah. I think th the problem that you're kind of having, which is kind of what I had too, is they didn't make this like an American Kickstarter. This is very dry looking. You don't really get a sense of the game. There's not really yeah. any action to it. For something that's jousting, you don't have knights going against each other. You don't have any of that stuff you don't have any ameritrashy stuff where you really feel like mm -hmm. you're in the theme of stuff. it doesn't have to be ridiculous but it i don't feel like this was built for american audiences the same way as it might have been bit like they could have more of a dry euro they could have gone down to their ren fair and been like all right just start start swinging some swords around like yeah <laughs> so I, I think that's the main problem because it didn't speak to me as far as the games that i usually get super excited about either from that aspect it's really the theme that's holding me here yeah i will have to say though the theme really speaks to me. It's really highly anticipated. I also felt like, though, I couldn't really get a really good idea of how you play. It's like there's a worker placement phase where you're collecting the items. Right. And then there's, like, the phase where you're kind of, like, I don't know if it's, like, pick up and deliver, but you're, like, getting favors from other people. But you're doing that. Like, everyone's doing that. So you're doing – there's got to be some mechanism for yeah. that. And then you're jousting, and then you're going through the bracket. And you can either play it, like, against, like, no knights or against each other or – Right. Even solo, you can play this. So there's different modes and everything. There's PV, you know, player versus player. There's player versus environment. There's solo. I had a hard time grasping if it was actually fun, though. And so yeah. that's that's where I struggle. Like, it looks cool. I like the idea of the theme. I like the idea of going up the bracket, how if you go up the stronger bracket, like, against more known champions, you're going to get more victory points. But you might take more of a toll, and you might stumble and not get to that end. Right. Where if you go up, like, some easy ones first and then fight a harder guy, you know you're probably going to get through. You're going to walk through the first two and then get to the end guy. And Having that kind of like deciding which path to go is really interesting. I can't be for sure if I will enjoy it though because I don't feel like I got a good idea of how it actually plays. Yeah. And without doing a lot more research, I just couldn't really get my head around it. So this one went from a, oh, I'm really excited about this one, put this one on the list. This is like a must buy for us to this is a play before I buy. I'm still very interested. I'm going to seek it out, but I, I need to play it before I spend yeah. the money on it. I yeah. think that they missed one thing in this in the fact that if you lose a bracket and you get taken out, they're like, oh, there's still ways for you to earn glory. If I'm taken out, like, at that point, I want to either be, like, sabotaging other people <laughs> or, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, betting on other that. people. Like, I want a different way to win the game. That'd be cool. And be trying to do different things. Be like, ha now nobody won. Now we only go by these glory points. Like, maybe yeah. the win condition yeah. could be, like, the most money. And you get that either through being right. the person fighting or just someone making deals on the side and gambling on it. Or exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, be interesting. I feel like that would have added, like, a little bit more interaction. Yeah, a little bit more interaction between players. A well, little bit, inch it might have been a little bit more. I maybe cutthroat or something if they had thrown that in. What we were discussing before the show is that in these jousting type tournaments, usually like if you lost, you lost your armor. Yeah, and yeah. Armor was thousands of dollars. Think about like oh yeah, it's like the idea behind your, Fast and your the Furious. Family. Yeah, that would be your family. This is more like arms. a yeah. racing sport well, than like football, yeah, where it's like, like your well, car gets furious, smashed yeah. up and you're screwed. You if know? Yeah. You, you lose, you lose your car. And yeah. This is the same type of thing where like if you lost, you could lose like your horse. Like or I'm taking that horse. You could take. I mean, you could. Yeah, <laughs> you could lose your armor. And so it was a way for people that were underprivileged to really hone their skills and try to, like, make themselves known to become knights. Because you, if you could win this tournament, right. then you could petition the king or queen or whoever and then try to become an actual knight and get paid. Yeah. And so that was kind of the idea behind a lot of these things. So these things, there was a lot on the line for it these It was a way for you to sort of escape your born yeah. class. It was like a blood sport almost. Yeah. Where you're like, if you can survive and then get to the end, you can prove yourself and then leave that serfdom level and get to, like, a knight level, which would have been, like, a good level to be at during those times. And Robert says, I fear with Kickstarter that I'm excited enough about the game to back it, but waiting becomes tedious, and I'm still waiting for a few yeah. games. I have been delayed most of the year and a half. You know what? If you back enough Kickstarters, Robert, you, forget you don't it. have to wait. <laughs> and then when they come in, you're like, oh, yeah. Like, I, I remember I backed that. <laughs> that <laughs> I went out, I went out to work play. on Tuesday, and there was an Amazon package. I was like, what is this? I thought it was an Amazon package. I was like, what is this? Open up its Animal Kingdom. I was like, oh, yeah, we backed that. <laughs> forgot about it. Yeah. You know, we backed I it. I do think a lot of people it. almost 
like either consciously or subconsciously go like I'm just gonna back ev- like something every other week or whatever. Yeah. So or there's just a constant flow of things coming in. Then you get Sometimes presents you get all the time, yeah. like three or four of them yeah. at once, like we did. Or you might get like just onesies, right. twosies to hold you through the long summer months. That's right. Then you get presents and you're like super <laughs> excited every month, you know? Who You'd be like, money? oh, surprise, such I'm and such. Kids. I am hoping though, since this has already been funded both in America and in Poland, that yeah, it'll that we'll be see it. retail somewhere. Yeah, because I'm going to say this is a try before I buy for me because me as well. for yeah. myself, I love Pass Me. I don't like this theme, guys. Sorry. And that's just kind of like a me thing. I'm oh not the excited. Theme doesn't speak to you. I'm not excited about jousting and knights and stuff that's like true. that. Like, You're I could care less. Person. Yeah. Now, if this was set in space and they were like on some kind of like rocket horse and they had lightsabers. Yes. I See, would be a thousand times down for pod racing with lightsabers. Light sa- yeah, lightsabers and like hoverboards. That would be freaking awesome. So then that's the fine line division so awesome. we have between us. We're like, I would always much rather go more towards a, a realistic historical battles in dungeon delving, and she always wants to go more towards space and futuristic. And it's just different. She wants to have a laser gun, and I just want to have a sword. I mean, it's just everyone's got their thing. I really enjoyed Medieval Academy, which is like a drafting game, kind of like a Seven Wonder style game that has a similar theme. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's not a theme that I think that I'm that into, but when I find myself playing something in this theme, I do enjoy it. But there's been tons of people that have enjoyed this game. You know, I yeah. think it was yeah. on uh, Sam's top ten. Yeah, Sam games. Healy talked it up. Yeah, at Essen to check out and stuff like that. So like, this is going to be a good game from what we've heard from the community. I for me, like it just wasn't particular for me. What like if this board spun? Would that <laughs> uh, sell you? Okay, so if it was a round board, like Knights of the Round can Table. Can we just curve the edges oh. for you without doing enough? And it's I spun. <laughs> I'm going to say I'd be a little bit more interested. A little when bit I, more interested. When I make sandwiches <laughs> for her, I have to cut them in circles. <laughs> All of her food comes She's that like, way. ooh, another sandwich disc. And yeah. then and then if the plate egg, you just like spin cup. the plate on your hand. Your waffles you're like, are all rounded. <laughs> yeah, I can spin a plate on my hand. I'm like, your waffles are delivered. <laughs> Actually I think all the games this week were are, are looks like safe bets. All yeah. They all look like good yeah. games that are claimed and have been played Which and is enjoyed. Right. right. Started yeah. Typically starts to dry up towards. There's that less gamble here than the there year. are some weeks. That's another thing, guys, because if you guys remember last year we, in December, a, we were. Yeah, just not hard to reviewing find three some or great four. games. There some really okay. well, there were some really good games, but then there was a lot of ones that ended up being more. We were just less excited about them. Well which even is, the is last a week or two, I think there's been some that were like, yeah, throw that one on there too, I guess. Yeah, you know? where it became like last year it was hard yeah. this time of year getting things on the list. This year, we haven't had a problem getting things on the list because there does become a point in the year where we're like, oh, I guess we'll talk about this game, but I'm not as excited because this, this, and this, or something like that. It just you know? naturally, I mean, every s- everything has its ebb and flows. And there's, yeah. there's that month like when it was like earlier in like autumn and stuff where it was just like awake and ru- like every single game company had a game out. And it was just yeah. like, cool, we can only talk about five, I guess. When we had too many, yeah. too many to yeah. do on that time. Yeah, absolutely. I would think that some people would start to see that, and maybe they're going to start spacing out. But there's a reason for it, though, I know. There's certain buying times. But, like, they used to have movies, right? There would be, like, summer movies that would only yeah. be in the summer. But now they did, like, you know, some of the Hunger Games movies and Harry Potter game uh, movies and James Bond movies and stuff. They come out, like, in November or December, or like Star Wars, right? Yeah, more like a Christmas Where movie. Where it's like, yeah, this is, like, a summer-style movie, but we're going to throw it in, like, early yeah. December or November right. or whatever. Maybe if you it know? does get slow, guys, and we don't want to talk about – some particular Kickstarter. We could just watch a movie. Well, there you go. We'll do just a movie with well, you we guys. We did Irish so Gage no. one week. We well, played a game. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Maybe we'll do something like that where if there's a really good one that is on or we're having trouble finding something, then we'll also just kind of like play maybe a Kickstarter we that we've like gotten in. We do like a three hour something. barrage stream. Well, there you go. Well, I know you're talking <laughs> about uh, your new favorite game right now, which is what? Mandala? Mandala. So yes. two player only, but yeah, it's so good. And yes. Well, uh, you don't have to play. You can just show us how to play and then referee. Round waffles and only. Just, like, Absolutely. Lego my ego, baby. Oh, okay, Gilbert. If you were not tuned in to our whole barrage oh thing yeah. that we talked about Extensive in the beginning of this, talk. yeah, go ahead and stay tuned for that once it fully uploads on the internet and everything. Because we talked a lot about it. it. So good. Yeah, so I would. Good. I would play it right now, and that's that's a lot because I don't typically. I have to say that overall, I'm leaning towards the heavier games now because we've gotten in some lighter games, and I'm just like. Okay, been there, done that. And so now I'm kind of leaning towards heavier Well, like games. you said, your life has just changed. Yeah. You've got a little and bit I've more free time. I've always said I was a mid, but when I had less free time, it was it easier was like to go towards the lighter hour games. 
now I'm back in that two to an hour to two hours is now my sweet spot instead of where before yeah. it was an hour or less. Yeah. So yeah I'm, I'm three in that kids, my wife and I played lots of big long <laughs> games, and now it's yeah. like it's hard to carve out that time. But they're getting older now. You got and they're you got that gobbles game. You guys like that gobble gobblers? <laughs> yes. Ninety percent of all Greg's plays <laughs> on BGG is just <laughs> gobble <laughs> gobblers, baby. Two gobble player gobblers. tic tac toe variant. Mm-hmm. Hey, my younger daughter likes it. She's six. <laughs> I'm a good dad. Aww. <laughs> Aww. All right, guys. Do we have any other news that we want to talk about? For Thanks every for watching for 75 yeah. minutes, guys. There's nothing going on today, so they everyone had free time. Everybody that is at Pax U. Well, they're not on here. If they're at Pax U, probably. Just How dare you? How yeah. dare you have a fun time there? I know. No, I hope that we're going to talk to people and find out what's hot. And that's right. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to talk about some of it because w- that's kind of when some Kickstarters get talked about and rumors happen. So That's 100% it's it. It's time to get the rumors flying on what next Kickstarter is I've already launch. been texting people who are yep. there like, what's going on? Already what's starting on? Already starting to hear about stuff for like April and stuff like that. I already people, offered up my yeah. firstborn child for some games. Well, that's right. That's right. You know, I mean, we're going to have to make another Your one, I guess. Child, so. Oh, okay. Never mind. So <laughs> you only have one. <laughs> yeah, but you got two. You got to back up. All right, guys. Way to say firstborn child when you don't have a second. Maybe she's pregnant. <laughs> Wow, I'm not, She's guys, not. guys. I'm so, I'm so excited for you guys. No, no. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't really release it Thanks like that. Thanks so much for watching us, guys. <laughs> that's how we told everybody. <laughs> I'm going to have to end this stream because the guys are getting ridiculous She's got here. <laughs> we appreciate all of you guys tuning in to us, especially with all the craziness going on for the holidays. Even you, Gilbert. That's right. You know what you did. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and we will talk to you all next week. Have a good one.